simplify expression with exponents unit 4 lesson 2 so notice number one explain why these are not equivalent so what I notice is that 27 has an exponent of 4 over 3 and X as well but the 4 only applies to the X and not the 27 and so what I'm gonna say is exponent of 4 is only on X no brackets there's no brackets that indicate that the 4 is also on the 7 meanwhile I have for question 2 simplify the following keep answers as exact reduce fractions and don't leave answers with negative exponents for question 2a I'm gonna have the 1 3rd apply to each part the negative one through, remember from last time, that I'm going to split it so that I have a negative in the numerator. I'm going to apply to all three parts, and I get 8 to the exponent 1, 3, x. Well, 6 times 1 over 3 reduces to 2. y, well, 9 divided by 3 is 3, so y, 3. 27 to the exponent negative 1 over 3, x to the exponent 4, y, the exponent negative 2 over 3. A couple things I noticed the x's can be combined and the y's can be combined eventually. So I have for the coefficient portions 8 to the exponent of 1 over 3 can be written as cube root of 8. And then I'm going to combine the 2 and the 4 and they're going to add based on product law to become x6. And then for the next part I have uh, the 3 and the minus 2 over 3, that is going to com combine. And so I wrote down the steps on the side that says, well, when I do 3 minus 2 over 3, I need to multiply by 3 on the top and the bottom for that first fraction. And I get 9 over 3 minus 2 over 3, which reduces to 7 over 3. And so I have 7 over 3 for the y. I'm just going to move that over for a sec so I can deal the 27. Meanwhile, 27, remember, 27 will have an exponent of negative 1, but it will be cube rooted by 3. So see how it's important how you're writing your numbers? Otherwise, it's going to be very messy. So next, cube root of 8 is 2, and then x6. Cube root of 27 is a nice 3. And then it has an exponent of negative 1 still. And then I have y7 over 3. I am going to bring the 2 and the 3 to the negative 1 towards the front. So it could be a coefficient. And so I have 2 in the numerator. But because 3 to the negative 1 has a, it has a negative exponent, I'm going to bring it to the bottom. And then I have x6 and y7 over 3 as my final answer. So on the side, yeah, what I'm going to do is apply that negative 2 over 3 to each part of the bracket. And before I actually do that, I should put that negative so that it's part of the numerator like so. And as a first step, I get 64 to the exponent negative 2 over 3, m. Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 5 times negative 2 is so m to the negative 10 all over 343 to the exponent of negative 2 over 3. So I'm noticing that all of these are negative, so I'm going to bring that to the new, uh, denominator, bring all of that to the numerator. And as a next line, I will get 343 to the exponent 2 over 3 divided by 64, 2 to the exponent 3, and m to the 10 like so. And as a next step, I am going to rewrite it so that I have square root of 343 to the exponent 2, but I need to have it, sorry, as a cube root. The reason that is, is because I have 343 to the exponent of 2, and the denominator is a 3, so I should actually have it under a cube root. And then for the 64, I should again have 64, so it's it's better to just write the numerator part first so you don't make that mistake that I did and then put it under cube root and then m10. We're not done because we got to simplify. 
So if the, cal uh, if the number is nice and it works perfectly, you might be able to again use a calculator, right? But sometimes it doesn't work and so we always need to know how to do the prime factorization. So for 343, what number is it divisible by? So it, it's actually divisible by 7 and so if you do the prime factorization on the side, this is what you get. So you notice that the 43 can be split into 7 to the exponent 3. So the way I break this down is, well, if I have a 3 there, and then I have a 7, so you're saying that 343 can be rewritten like so. And so if that's the case, well, these two parts will cancel out, and I'll just have the 7 to the exponent 2. I don't really like using this step because the brackets are there, and then I don't want it to confuse people, but then in case you need to see it at least once, what's going on and how I'm getting the 7. I'm going to repeat that process for the 64. So 64 can be prime factorized and do that on the side, and this is what you get. You see, you get that the, the, the prime factorization of 64 is 2 to the 6 or 4 to the 3. The reason I wrote it like that is because I want to eventually cube root it. So when I do that, again, if I wrote it this way, I get 3 to the um, to 3 cube root of 4, 3, 2. Um, again, it's kind of bad format, but it's just to show you that these two cancel out. And then what I have as a next step, and I usually skip this black step. But I just want to show it at least once so that that's why I have 7 to the exponent 2 all over 4 to the exponent 2. And I can't forget that m10, m10. And so hopefully you can visually see what's going on and how I'm getting this. And so I get equals 49 divided by 16 m10. Okay, question C. So again, you're going to make sure you apply it to each part of the coefficient and the variables. And so I have 256, the exponent 3 to the 4, a, well, 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then 20 divided by 4 is 5, so 5 times 3 is 15. So all we have is a 256. So again, I'm going to put 256 with the exponent of 3. I'm going to 4 root it. And I get this. Prime factorization 256 is like so. 2 and 128, 2 and 64, 2 and 32, 2 and uh, 16, 2 and 8, uh, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. Count all the 2s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And so you get 256 is 2 to the 8. Or I could I, I know that I can break this so that I have 2 to the 2 to the exponent 4 because of the um, power of a power rule, and I get 4 to the exponent 4. And so I'm going to rewrite this so that I get, uh, it's my, like, the black line step, my, like, optional step to help you visualize what's going on, is that I have 4 to the exponent 4 to the exponent 3 all over a cube root of 4, and then I have the rest a9, b15. That's going to cancel out, and therefore I have 4, 3, a9, b15, and 4 to the 3 is equal to 64, a9, b15. Part E, I have, again, I'm going to rewrite this so that the negative is forced to the numerator. I'm going to apply this to each part. And so I have 8 to the exponent negative 1 over 3, x to the exponent, well, 3 over 4 times negative 1 over 3. Well, the 3s cancel out, and I get negative 1 over 4. And then y to the exponent negative 2 over 3. So keep in mind that is kind of all over 1 because any number is all over 1. And when I have everything to the negative exponent, I'm going to simply place it in the denominator. And while I do that, I am going to make sure I'm not flipping the exponents. And I'm going to just leave it like so. So all I'm doing is getting rid of that negative. And keep in mind, I'm noticing that 8 one third 
that's the same thing as writing cube root of 8. And so that's equal to 1 over 2 x 1 fourth and then y 2 third. And that's it. So what's important is that I don't, I don't flip the exponent. Don't flip exponent. So question F, I noticed that I have 25 divided by 5 and then x 1 third divided by x 1 quarter. So I'm simply going to do what's 25 divided by 5 and that is equal to 5, right? And then I get x and I'm going to apply quotient rule. I'm going to subtract the two exponents like so. And then I get 5x. I have to do LCD between the two fractions. And so it's all over 12. And so it's going to be 4 over 12 because I would have had to multiply the top and bottom by 4 and top and bottom by 3 over here. And so I get 4 over 12 minus uh, 3 over 12. And I get 5x to the exponent 1 over 12, like so. G. Uh, I'm going to apply that 2 into the inside, but I want to break it down first. So what I mean is the 4 has an exponent of 1, and so I'm going to rewrite 4 as 1 over 3 because that part is a numerator and the number in front of the radicand is a denominator. And then I have a, 2 to the exponent 3, put that all over brackets to the exponent 2, divided by... Again, there's a 1 on the 4, so I have 4, 1 divided by 6, and a, and then 2 divided by 6 is 1 over 3. So I have that. At that point, I'm going to distribute the 2 into each part, and so I get 4 to the exponent 2 over 3, and a to the exponent 4 over 3, all over 4, 1, 6, a, 1, 3. Uh, next, I want to subtract the exponents on the 4 and on the a. And so I get 4, 2 over 3, minus 1 over 6, a, 4 over 3, minus 1 over 3 is equal to, well, 4, um, 4 over 6 minus 1 over 6 is 3 over 6, so that simplifies to a half, and that simplifies to a 1. I'm not done yet because I could have written the 4 to the exponent and a quarter as uh, square root of 4, and then as a, and that simplifies to 2a. So final question, h. So if you look at it first glance, it might scare you a bit. Um, but if you try to remember the power of a power rule, what does the power of a power rule say? Well, the power of a power rule says, well, when you have an exponent and on outside of the bracket, if there's another exponent on it, uh, like so, then you can reduce it. Well, you can now multiply the two exponents. And right away, I multiply the two exponents, and it simplifies to a 2. So let me just do that in steps. So I have x minus 9, and then I have 18 over 9, because 18 times 1 is 18, and then divided by 9. So that reduces to a nice 2. So after that, you've done this a lot of times, so you're going to FOIL that. That's the proper way of expanding that out. And um, you would use the binomial expansion, hopefully, at this point. Um, but otherwise, you would rewrite it twice and get your expanded version. And so I will have, by the binomial expansion, x squared minus 18x plus 81, or do a couple steps before that, and you'll eventually get to that as well.